Hey Space Cowboys, it's Seasonal Frostbite and welcome back. I'm back. I know. Happy Wednesday, right? It's hump day. Hump, hump day. So welcome to this new series that we're starting and it's more of a studio vlog style because if I, I've said before to you guys, I want to basically talk to you guys, show you guys what I've been working on. Uh, why Mothercrafta is what it is and why I'm pretty much moving away from doll customizing. I know it, it sounds so sad. It's so sad. so sad. But not really. I'm still going to be customizing dolls because I want to be able to show you guys to use what you have. But personally, I'm moving into making dolls from scratch. And I've been on this journey for years. Years. Like years oh my god it's get from sketches to looking up materials and everything like that and i'm finally i heard from you guys on instagram you have questions for me you guys want to see the behind the scenes and a lot of that was reserved for patrons i will just go more into depth with patrons because i really need uh, more people to see what i'm building because uh your girl needs some capital your girl needs some capital in order to keep finishing what i'm doing so what I'm going to tell you is what I'm going to speak into existence is this line of dolls called the Endless Dolls. And what it is, is a series of interchangeable parts for dolls and it is designed with the artist and doll customizer and the doll lover in mind. It is a line where you do not have to rely on um, you don't have to rely on toy companies to go out and buy their stuff to repaint it into making something else. It's it's already prepared for you. And that is what I've been working on because if I thought all these years, over the years, I had a deep look really deep down inside. And look, let, let me put that on silent. Um, I had to look really deep down inside about what I want to do with dolls. I know that I want to make money um, with my dolls, with my art. Not just dolls, but my art in general. And I really, 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 at the end of the day, want, it's like it's the start of seasonal frostbite when I think about it. I want to be able to give you guys the tools to make something and create something awesome, basically. And that's what Endless Doll is all about. So these are going to be studio style vlogs and we're calling it the Doll Maker's Diary. This is entry number one. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here and joining. And we have some questions from um, a lot of you on Instagram. So if you don't know, go ahead and go follow me on www.instagram.com slash seasonal frostbite so you can get your questions answered because I'm a lot further in creating my doll line than a lot of you are and I will have to say first and foremost already that my doll line will not be using anybody from outside the United States as far as things like if I have if it's an equipment that I really really need like um the doll rooting machine that's been that's been on its way for quite a while now but um, stuff like that, I have to get overseas equipment, I do not mind, but all the manufacturing will be in the United States and my dream is to see that it is a bunch of artists making these things. And I've been kind of, I need capital to be able to pay people because I want to be able to pay everyone on my team a living wage. I want people to be paid and I want their dreams. I want to be the company that helps you be a better person you know what I mean like if you have a dream I want to know hey if working here how is it going to help you be a better you that's what I want I want to be a company that's kind of a little bit more about people you know and so now I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions Bubba 316 asked me on the slides I'm gonna paraphrase because this was in the live earlier and I can't really go back 
and check it out because the first live got like she she dead my phone died in the middle of that live and you guys asked me to share it and i couldn't because obvious reasons <laughs> my phone died thanks instagram no that's me i need to stop going live and my phone is about to die right um we have too much fun and i get passionate and my phone is like no warning cut off cut off you didn't pay the bill <laughs> you didn't pay the battery bill it's off <laughs> so stupid anyhow anywho Bubba316 asked me, well, where do you start? Like, how do you start with your doll line? The first thing what I did, the first thing I did was research. I bought a lot of dolls. Um, I bought Azome. I bought, I bought Obitsu. Um, I looked at business practices from Smart Doll. I looked at those doll companies because they, they have a business model. Oh, and Nendoroids. They have a business model that I respect and I want for a company that's in the United States that we don't get to see that kind of quality integrity when it comes to a uh, certain type of making type products, right? Because what I'm making is more of a craft supply, not necessarily a doll line, but we're making dolls, you know? This is a, a craft supply to help you create dolls. Basically, you won't have to go to Mattel or, um, you won't have to go to Mattel anymore to get your supplies. You don't have to buy from them. You don't have to worry about them. Yeah, you can still collect their stuff or every once in a while use their things. <clears throat> but you'll have a company, which is my company, that caters to you. So, yeah. <laughs> I studied I studied the Made to Move Barbie doll. Um anything anytime that was super articulated because what I'm looking for is super articulation I also thought of what people use how people use dolls and how, what I wanted to use what do I use my dolls for to tell stories and I want them to be super articulated and I also wanted control over the quality so I did not want to take it overseas and use the same factories that uh, Mattel and MGA and all kinds of popular toy brands use I didn't want to do that I wanted to control over my quality and I wanted to bring it in the United States using what I know from art school and product making so I after studying all those dolls getting those dolls I took them apart I took those dolls apart like OG seasonal frostbite used to do and still do like uh, I took them apart I cut things I saw how things move and I used that to base off um, to be inspired on what I'm making and it's completely different but there are some things where it's like similar um, uh, like you know a standard wrist joint <clears throat> you know very standard stuff just seeing how it works cutting up cutting them open looking it at looking at it seeing how it's made and then once I did that I did so many sketches oh my god like like I showed on live I showed some of my very first sketches um, I have a lot but this one particularly has in this book as I was showing you guys I had three sketchbooks where I did lots of designs and lots of thinking and after and I this is these are technically notes for um, for pull, taking apart the doll and seeing what it looks like. Let me see if I can find it. I'm, I'm on camera right now, so that is a thing. Oh, well, you can see what I've designed for Mokos' new body. I remember showing that one on Instagram. I don't know if you can, okay, yeah, you can see if I do, if you do this, you can, you can kind of, you can, you can kind of see, <laughs> You can kind of see it's really it's really blown out because anything white right now is really really bright but in any color right now you can really see anywho so after I did those sketches I just sketched and I sketched and I sketched and then I tried to imagine in 3 just remember when you design stuff to think in 3d now there was another question from um, I'm going to go ahead and look her up because I'm actually very proud of her because she is making her dolls dreams come true um, doll arts doll dolls arts and crafts DAC 
589 you can find her here on YouTube um, she's been making her own doll heads and she has been selling like her own her own dolls her own doll sculpts that look more true to life to um, more like Disney inspired and other other things that she just felt like she just wanted to do just more more true to life true to cartoon life type designs and she's going to school for animation and I gave her some advice and I'm going to relay the advice here um, go ahead and go ahead and follow uh, it's underscore DAC um, let me see if, underscore DAC 589 underscore DAC that's what we call it for short anyways so we do that and um, we were doing that okay so go follow her so anyway she asked me um, if I teach her if I show her what I'm doing um, it'll give her more confidence not ask me but she was saying uh, she's going to school for animation right now and having more information on where to go about creating your own stuff would help so I'm gonna give I'm gonna provide that information and these diaries but again guys um, please leave in the comment below the comments below ask questions you can also go over to instagram and dm me questions that you want answered and we can just make that part of this series the doll making series so the first this is the first episode and it's gonna be kind of a little scenic a little a little you can just see what i'm doing behind the screens and we'll talk about equipment we'll talk about materials the one thing i cannot talk to you about because i have to protect my own designs um I'm still kind of eh about that. Uh, I have to protect my own designs, but what I can tell you is how I got to where I got, like where where do you start when you want to design your own doll line? And the first step is learning. You guys all collect dolls. You've all studied them. I even got the Rainbow High dolls to look at the, artic the articulation and look at the body types and um, the details and what's what's trending what's not and I looked at all of I looked at all of that what works and what doesn't work um, and some of these are based on my opinion but a lot of it was just studying you guys like um, studying the studying the um, studying the market I'm talk I'm actually listening to you guys when we talk about my doll light on instagram i'm i'm listening to your questions everybody wants one six scale which girl it was always gonna be one six scale i don't even it was always gonna be one six scale <laughs> that is my shit <clears throat> anyway um yeah so uh we are talk from the beginning about the beginning um i'll tell you about how seasonal frostbite got started in the doll maker's diary and because this, this is entry number one, this is just this is a little teaser, a little, a little teaser. So now that we talked about Bubba and DAC, now I'm going to get to Sophia's question. That's because she left it up under the video. Um, Princess Buttercup 122. That's Sophia. <laughs> I got Hey, Sophia. Sophia asks, how do you know what kind of doll what kind of doll look you want and do you search online so personally i when it comes to dolls representation is very 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 important to me but not just any kind of representation i don't want just a plain black doll i want black fantasy i want to be giving y'all fairy vibes and witchy vibes and i want to just i want to be able to to dream outside of reality do you know what i mean like I don't know black sci-fi and black um, Lovecraft country, basically, baby, 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 baby. Black magic, real black girl magic. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I want to see, and that's the kind of stuff I want to do. And I want to recreate these characters and stories and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing that I focused on was um, representation and the sense that, um, how can I explain it? representation in the sense of lots of skin tones lots of skin tones like um one of the best doll lines that like for customization so that it's similar to my business platform is obitsu but they came out with different skin colors of my skin tone 
as a limited line and we're not a limited line or or a limited color you know what i mean and it was just so sad because there's they are, they're the best articulation on the market the best i'm gonna take that title from them that's my plan but i'm gonna give them their props without them i would not have been able to learn what high quality articulation and quality of a product looks like even though i've studied that they have a little bit of some flaws from just usability and i've perfected that but um yeah so the first thing the first thing that i did was i studied what i like i love monster high dolls and not in the sense that I like the monster theme. I think it's a little gimmicky. I've always thought it was a little gimmicky. But I love the werewolf, the vampires, the ones that look more like people. And I did love Frankie Stein. Absolutely cute. And I love the idea. But again, a little gimmicky. But I loved that they brought anime aesthetics, fantasy aesthetics to the United States. They did that. Like Bratz has some anime aesthetics but we i think monster high took it to a whole new level where everybody's trying to create something cool and awesome and just ah the creativity surging is so beautiful okay i love it and i it's because of that scale um i i honestly believe in my aesthetics no bigger than an original 2001 brat stall when it comes to heads and proportions or not well just heads um and then no bigger no bigger than a monster high doll before the reboot you have to be in those range because the ever after high dolls as much as we love them um their heads were way too big and when they started shrinking them yeah thanks but also you gave them these horrible archaic smiles absolutely terrible so when it came to my aesthetic I kind of stuck in these ranges in the sense that if it was like, okay, well, if I was going to make Monster High dolls, this is what it looked like. But at the same time, I'm not making Monster High dolls. I'm making anime dolls. And again, I studied, I kept studying different dolls and different lines. And um, I studied what's, what's being for sale. I studied what's being for sale in Junkie Spot. And I also studied what's being um, sold in Pandora's box. And um, is it called Pandora's box or just Pandora? I think Pandora. I haven't been on the website in a while, but, um, I just studied, I studied all what people are doing with dolls all over the world. I studied the Chinese dolls, the Korean dolls. I've studied the, um, Japanese dolls. I've also studied American dolls. I've studied French dolls. I've studied, um, some Germans, but like the toy market in terms of fashion doll is pretty limited, but I've, most of the people that I've studied were other artists and other companies uh, you always got to learn for somebody who always has it you know and one one person in particular that i really liked to study was smart doll because they were very open with showing us the studio and i love the integrity of that doll that doll is a 400 dollar doll and she's worth every penny the articulation and the way that the way they cast in japan is that's a very hard thing to show, hard thing to do. That's what Nendoroid used to do, which they still kind of do. But again, like things change. But uh, Smart Doll has been very consistent with their quality, and they they've hired, they've managed to hire people to do traditional Japanese hand casting, and I really enjoyed that. Um, and I said I want to do something like that in the United States. So that's what I did. Um, so in, in terms of studying my aesthetic, I just do a variety of different things because everyone has different types. For my designs that I have right now, um, I've, I've shown some of them. I have the pug goblin, because <laughs> designed after my, my family, the family pet, Brady. I have the, uh, we call him Clark Wolf, the Clark Wolf uh, sculpt. And that is the sculpt for my, that I'm going to be mainly using for uh, my stop motion series and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed episode one of the doll makers diary um, we can talk materials guys you can ask me questions about materials you can ask me questions about where I started um, 
and we'll just compile all the questions into a more related video. I'm just gonna start this off as a good intro where I answered some of your questions because some of the questions I don't remember. So <laughs> please reach out, reach out, leave a comment. If you guys know, I read all your comments. I moderate my own comment section, okay? After every video, I will be chilling in the comment section for about an hour to two hours, but I always check back once a week to see how the, not only how the video is doing, but seeing how you guys are responding to the video. I listen to you guys. Um, I answer your questions if you have questions. And so go ahead, comment what you wanna know. Um, I can tell you about the research for materials. I can tell you about um, what to do at school. Oh God, we kind of trailed off a little bit. And um, I just want to, I, I guess I'll talk about this in another video, but I, it's in my heart now. So I'm going to speak what's in my heart right now because um, Dak, who I was talking about earlier, she's in school for animation. And I told her that's very limiting because animation is all digital. Unless they're going to teach you how to sculpt digitally, um, I don't see a viable way for it. And this is just from me, me looking at that, right? I got my degree in drawing and painting because school is a big part of where I, I am, where I am today. Because I went about the time, like, uh, let's see, around the time that I was, I went back to school when I was 25, right? And I had to, I had a new fresh look at school. I said, I'm gonna go to school, but I wanna make dolls. So I said, whatever class I take, I'm gonna make it doll related. So sewing, pattern making, I tied that into making doll clothes. I spoke to my teachers that this is what I really wanna do. How can I do it? Da, 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 da. They let me sew doll clothes. I took pottery. Doll, how did I make that doll related? I learned how to throw um, pot like wheel throwing. I learned how to do wheel throwing and I learned it so I can throw in miniature. I can throw pots in miniature and make pots and, and vases and all kind of stuff. Then I, then I also took uh, jewelry and small metals. That is a class that, that I learned how to cast. Um, I learned how to cast with metal so I can make doll accessories and metal. She was uh, balling, but you know. Oh yeah, oh my God. This is the only one that's perfect. We'll hope, we'll, we have a machine to do. And silver, like silver and gold. I, I know how to do that. Yeah. Um, I also, I also learned, let me look, I learned a lot. I also even spoke on it. I'm, I always spoke to my professors about it. Your art school is your safe space for you to learn and have ideas and to grow and to ask questions. And even if they're not related, like I built, I established these relationships with my professors and I established these relationships with my um, with my fellow classmates. Um, you never know who has that idea. And I, and I will have to say that's why Endless Dolls will be about people because yes, I have people who are who can help me now, but I need to be able to pay them and a living wage. And that is important to me. Um, and that's, that's why I'm trying to build what I'm building now. So we'll start, we'll start uh, we can even talk about like where you can go, what what classes you can take, or anything you anything you need to ask me. I'm here for you, and that's why I had to look deep deep down inside. That the one thing that I was really really um, concerned about, the main thing that I really cared about was making other people's dreams come true. When it, especially when it came to dolls, because there was a blog it started with the no nap time blog everybody knows no nap time don't act like you don't know no nap time okay before any of us was here it was no nap time and she showed us how to paint on monster high dolls and that blog 
is everything. And I got to meet them and it was perfect. Like not perfect, perfect, but it was, it was everything. She showed me a lot of stuff. Your friendships and getting out, there are more people like you. Go talk about your dreams and don't like, I'm, you know, we'll talk, we'll talk, we'll talk. Like, uh, I built seasonal frostbite on my own, but I also, I had some pretty good support. Um, although I had to speak financially to my mother a lot about this stuff. I had my husband who was my boyfriend. He was my friend at the time, my friend and my boyfriend who really just support and believe me that, that sometimes that, that free 99 support can do a lot. That free 99 support, it does a lot for you. And um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna say for the rest of this video. I think we're clocking in at 27 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go. Again, leave your questions below. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna, this is what you're gonna see. You can kind of see what I'm doing in my old studio. Look, this is before. I've, I apologize for how bad the old studio looks, but and how messy it is. It's not like that anymore. My office where I create, which is where I am now, is a lot cleaner. I had to stop and um, I got myself a budget to basically fix this place up. So not only I can film in here, um, I, can, I can basically be inspired every time I come in this room to create. And that was really important to me. I have not done a tour yet. I, I really need to save that for patrons. I have to save that for the people who um, give me a little, even though it's only two people right now, one day it probably won't be two people. And um, right now, those are the people I have to really put a top priority on because they invest in me financially. And like I, I, I will say in the beginning, I started Seasonal Frostbite with no money and no support. I just... I just took like uh, I took my money for textbooks, and I literally said, "Girl, you ain't gonna pass, you ain't gonna fail this class without this textbook. So you better go to class. You better pay the hell attention." And I did some things to be able to to be able to have money for what I have now, and that was my priority. Like I was like, there were times where I was hungry, and I'm still hungry. You know what I mean? And I just want you guys to know that. But. Um, yeah, we're on 29 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series. I will see you guys next Wednesday. We can do another one of these because, you guys, I'm still I'm still working downstairs, okay? I'm still getting my woodworking on. I had to learn woodworking. And, of course, you guys know about Endless Dollhouse. That's uh, We go in production in February, which I'm preparing for now. And I hope you guys follow me. I hope you guys support me. And I hope you guys dream. I hope you guys dream and don't I hope I hope seeing me I like Evelyn from the interwebs once said a lot of people are afraid to just be seen trying and I y'all gonna watch me try and I'm not gonna be ashamed about it so <laughs> I hope I hope seeing me can help you and I hope the information I can sh and show you books or whatever you guys need books, books, uh, YouTube channels to check out. And I, I promise you there are something you never even thought of. Um, people to talk to, I can recommend. Um, there's even a Discord that you can ask other more experienced doll makers. Um, I, there's things like that. I will talk to the admins of that group if they want that known. If not, my bad. But I hope you guys will continue to follow my journey on with Endless Dolls and Endless Doll Houses. And um, I hope you guys want to see, you know, the hard work I'm going to put in. And I hope that inspires you to put in your own hard work or just follow what I'm doing. Either way, if I touch that creative spark inside of you, then that this video was worth it. This series is worth it. And that's uh, that's what's going to happen in 2021. We're going to keep working currently right now as you guys can see the footage that i just had playing in the background while i rambled is basically the prototype this is a uh, old footage and it's a lot further now and i'm gonna place where we are now and this is where we're gonna leave off in the the next episode of this i'll continue on with my prototype and keep up keep it moving 
keep it moving. It'll be almost like a documentary style where you can keep up with what I'm doing and uh, where we are in getting ready to be sold to you guys or whoever is interested in endless dolls and endless doll houses. <laughs> if you like this video, please like this video. Uh, leave a comment down below, especially if you have any questions for me uh, regarding Endless Dolls or Endless Doll Houses, uh, or even this series, this new series. Um, uh, yeah, I'll see you next Wednesday. Um, I can't guarantee that this will be a weekly kind of thing. This series will be doing something different every week. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this and please leave questions for me below for the next um, entry to the Dollmaker's Diary. Anywho, <laughs> remember, go out into the world and create something awesome or you're going to carry that weight. See you, space cowboy. <laughs> cool, 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 baby. Maybe I, 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 maybe I,